top 10 places to visit in the UK. Now, I've never been out of the country, um, but if I was to leave, I want to see what's in store for me outside. You feel me? So I'm going to see what's the top 10 places to visit in the UK. So just in case I do ever leave, I can be like, oh, bet I can go here. It's in the UK. You know, take me and my wife. You know, uh, let's go. What's up, guys? My name is Ryan Shirley, and I spent the last few years exploring the United Kingdom, and I want to show you my favorite places. So here's my UK top 10. UK top 10. All right, man. The United Kingdom is made up of the countries of England, Wales, Northern Ireland, and Scotland. If you want to go back in time and feel like you're in a fairy tale or a Harry Potter film, the UK is the place for you. It's easy. Nah, that's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. Will you really feel like you're in a Harry Potter film? I feel like, oh yeah, definitely. If I was, if I was here, definitely. Like you're in a fairy tale or a Harry. He, I definitely feel like if I'm on this train. That's crazy. Film, the UK is the place for you. It's okay, easy see. to see why so many myths and legends were born here. It's one of the world's most enchanting places. All right, so for our first location, we're gonna go visit possibly the most iconic city in the world, London. London. I've traveled more to London than any other international destination. Really? I have to wow. say it's my favorite city in the world and I just keep coming back. Okay. Everything from the double-decker buses to the energy of Piccadilly Circus. Nah, the double-decker bus is crazy. Like, I ain't never seen a bus like that. City feels so alive. Like, just... is it comfortable? Do you feel packed? I don't know. So many places to see. You can check out the iconic Big Ben and walk across the ridge to see the Palace of Westminster. There's the Tower Bridge, which is possibly the most famous bridge in all of London. You can go see the Stoic Guards at Buckingham Palace or take a ride on the London Eye. If you haven't already been to London, I'd highly recommend visiting when you can. It's hard to beat the London atmosphere. There's no city like it in the world. All right, okay. so after exploring London, we're going to make the two-hour drive over to Stonehenge. Located Stonehenge, wow, okay. In Wiltshire, England, lies one of the most famous man-made rock structures in the world. There's a lot of mystery surrounding Stonehenge, like what was its purpose and how was it made. Archaeologists right. believe it was constructed back between 3000 to 2000 BC. Stonehenge consists of a wow. ring of rocks, each being around 13 feet high and weighing nearly 25 tons each. It's unclear what the exact purpose of Stonehenge was. It's believed that it was used as an astronomical observatory or a religious site. Either way, it sure makes you stop and think how people thousands of years ago were able to construct this. All right, so after Stonehenge, we're gonna head on over to the Jurassic Coast. While you won't- The Jurassic Coast, this looks kinda crazy right here. Could you imagine being this high up? No, sir, oh my goodness. And any Mark this off the list. Here, you might find some fossils on the beach. The Jurassic Coast is England's only natural world heritage site, and it's become popular with its white cliffs and picturesque beaches that are full of fossils formed over 65 million years ago. One of the most famous spots on the Jurassic Coast is Dirtledore. It's this limestone arch that goes straight into the ocean. There's a great beach there, and I just can't think of a better place to spend during the hot English summers. One of my favorite spots on the Jurassic Coast is Old Harry's Rocks. Now, special thanks to my friend David Rule for providing this footage. He has an awesome Instagram and YouTube that I'll provide in the description below. I remember the first time I saw his picture of this place and I was just baffled by this. This is actually really beautiful, bro. I cannot cap to you. It looks like a cake. Are you there? The old hairy rocks are these sea stacks that are made completely out of chalk. Like, that why do I why do I want to eat this, bro? I don't know. Mark the end of the Jurassic Coast. In World War II, the stacks were used as target practice for pilots, so that's kind of crazy. I just love the combination what? of the green meadows with the white cliffs and the blue ocean. I mean, it's just hard to Definitely. beat that scenery. All right, so after the Jurassic Coast, we're gonna head up north to visit the. It like it looks like somebody painted it, bro of Wells. Now Wells is located in the southwest part of Great Britain. It's famous for its mountainous national parks, picturesque coastline. Like you cannot tell me God not real, bro. Look at look at this. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Who did this? I could tell a genius a genius creator created it, bro. Head up north to visit the country of Wells. Now Wells is located in the southwest part of Great Britain. It's famous for its mountainous national parks, picturesque coastline, and distinct Welsh language. One of the most scenic places in Wells is the Snowdonia National Park. It's a region in northwest Wells that is known for its mountains and lakes. The highest peak in Wells. 
I've never seen a hairy horse. Mount Snowdon is located in the park with an elevation of 10,085 meters. You can hike on up there or you can take the Snowdon Mountain Railway to the top. If you're lucky, you might be able to see Ireland across the sea. All right, so after Wells, we're gonna head to the Isle of Man. Now located in the Irish Sea, right between England and Ireland, lies a rugged island known for its rural landscapes. Isle of Man, okay. Medieval castles. While it's technically not part of the United Kingdom, it has status of crown dependency, and the UK is responsible for its defense and external relations. The Isle of Man has yeah. had an interesting history Humans have lived on it since 6500 BC, and in the 19th century, it was ruled by Norway. But in 1266, the island became part of Scotland, and now it is a self-governing isle. A interesting place on the Isle of Man is Peel Castle. It was constructed by Vikings in the 11th century and just sits right on the ocean. I mean, it's a pretty cool castle, if you ask me. All right, so after the Isle of Man, we're gonna head across the sea to visit North. Now this is nice. I can't count. And the last place. This place reminds me of uh, St. Augustine, Florida. Me. All right, so after the Isle Man, we're gonna head across the sea to visit Northern Ireland. Now, Ireland is full of just beautiful scenery, dramatic coastal cliffs and cliffs and countless castles. Back in 1921, Ireland was split into Northern and Southern Ireland as a result of the Government of Ireland Act of 1920. While Southern Ireland became a free Irish state, Northern Ireland remained within the United Kingdom. The capital of Northern Ireland is the city of Belfast, which Belfast. is the birthplace of the Titanic ship. One of the most iconic really? places in Island is the Dark Hedges. It's this road Dark lined hedges. with beech trees planted in the 18th century. It was used as a filming location for the Game of Thrones. On the northern coast, you can check out the Carrick Already Rope Bridge or see the basalt columns at the Giant's Causeway. I mean, there's just so much history and beauty in Ireland, and it just makes me want to go there and explore. All right. Bro, this is crazy. So for our next location, we're gonna head to Scotland to visit the Isle of Skye. This is probably... He's insane. He's insane. Do y'all see him, bro? Look. Look at him, bro. My all-time favorite place in... How do you get down? Okay, you literally feel like you're in a fairy tale when you visit there. I was lucky enough to go to the Isle of Skye last summer, and it's about a five-hour drive from Edinburgh. One of the most... Ooh. Impressive places in the Isle of Skye is the Old Man of Store. It's one of my all-time favorite rock formations. I felt like I was on the set of Game of Thrones when I was there. Now to get to the Old Man of Store, it's about a four kilometer hike. You walk through some conservation gates and you'll reach the famous rock pinnacles. I went for sunrise and sun- Okay, yeah, cause I was definitely like, where are the roads at? That and both occasions were breathtaking. When I was there, there was just like crows flying around the rock and, and there were some sheep running around. I mean, it was just a magical place. So the legend of the old man of store is supposedly a giant lived there a long time ago and when he was buried, his thumb was left sticking out of the ground. <laughs> when you go there, it's easy to see why it's one of the world's most iconic rock formations. It's one of my all-time favorite places and I recommend everyone to see it at least once in their life. Just a few minutes away from the old man of store, there is a breathtaking waterfall called Meow Falls that cascades down to the ocean. There's a nice viewpoint where you can look at the waterfall. The surrounding sea cliffs in the area are also stunning. One of the most famous is Kilt Rock, wow. which are right by Meow Falls. I mean, it's just such a cool area. There aren't many waterfalls that fall straight into the ocean. If you're looking to find some fairies, you may want to check out the fairy pools. There are these picturesque fairy blue pools. pools that lie at the base of the black colons. When I was there, there were so many midges. I didn't dare get close to the water, so make sure you bring some bug spray. If you want to do a beautiful hike, I'd also- Wow, bro, you can definitely see where we're, where our, um, different companies get their background screens, cause- Midges, I didn't dare get close to the water. I did not know this was here. So make sure you bring some bug spray. If you want to do a beautiful hike, I'd also recommend visiting the Kerrang. It's one of the most beautiful areas in the Isle of Skye. You feel like you're walking on a giant golf course. I found this crazy vantage point to get a good 360 view of the whole. Yo, he is. I, I, I couldn't, sir. Good on you. Area. All right, so after the Isle of Skye, we're going to head over to the nearby Eileen Donan Castle. If you're driving to the. Whoa, bro. It's an actual castle, bro sky you will drive right you will drive right by this it's one of my favorite castles in the uk situated on a small tidal island at the point where the three great no nah, I, I i actually want to go inside i actually want to go in there i wonder if he's going to show any pictures 
sea locks meet the castle was built in the 13th century i'm so mad at myself i didn't visit the castle when i was there i wasn't able to check it out that's one of my biggest regrets of when i visited the uk so don't make the same mistake i made all right so after castle we're gonna head over to one of scotland's most iconic locations the Glenfinan Viaduct is located at the I'm top of Loch Shill in the West Highlands of Scotland. It was completed around 1898. This may look familiar because it was featured in the Harry Potter films. When I was there, I wanted to get close to the bridge, so I walked underneath it. I was just shook by how big it actually was. After I hiked to the top to get a good vantage point so I could see the famous train go across the viaduct. Just really reminds you of those Harry Potter movies. Alright, so after yeah, Glen Finan, we're going to head over to Edinburgh. Now, if you want to go back in time, Edinburgh is a must. It's where J.K. Rowling wrote her Harry Potter novels. When I started traveling, this was one of the first cities I visited. It's a medieval old town what? with intricate neoclassical buildings, cobblestone streets, and beautiful gardens. The iconic Edinburgh Castle overlooks the city and is home to Scotland's off. crown jewels. When I was there, I didn't go into the castle because I was being too cheap, but one of my favorite places <laughs> was Calton Hill. It offers a beautiful view of the whole entire city. While we're How much was they charging? Edinburgh, we're going to head over to Arthur's Seat. Whoa. Now, Arthur's Seat. Arthur's Seat? What do they mean? Located in Holy Rod Park, and it's a short walk from Edinburgh Center. Arthur's Seat is an extinct volcano with an elevation of 823 feet. When I was there, I wanted to get as high as I could. Bro, are they living next to a volcano? What? So I could see all of Edinburgh. I made a hike up, and I reached the top. It was just so windy when I was there. It nearly blew me over. After I hiked to the top, I had a good time just hiking around Holy Rod Park and enjoying the views of one of UK's most iconic cities. All right, well, that is it for my United Kingdom. That's it, bro. Top 10. The UK is just such a unique region in the world, and I hope all can... Definitely is a beautiful place. I didn't know it was this beautiful, though. You know, I didn't know. I did not know this at all. Um, I didn't know there were so many places that use... That went to UK for their footage, for their movies, for their pictures. It's insane, bro. This is beauty and history. What was your favorite place in the video? Let me know. And it has a lot of history as well. That's really cool, man. Comment like below. This. I really like this. I would definitely consider it if I ever go to the UK. You know, I definitely want to ride this train low-key. I don't know, though. Um, but, yeah, man, that's the end of the video. Make sure you guys hit like button. Make sure you guys subscribe.